It's the Danny Lakey Late Show around the country. The following content is of an adult nature and it may make some listeners blush, say, oh my God, or even cause offence. Feel free to turn the radio down in three, two, one. Let's talk about sex with Dr. Nikki Goldstein. <laughs> sex. Classic. Hello, Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Hello, Danny Lakey. Um, should we be putting it down on the first date? Should we be releasing the sugar? Are you jumping straight into it? Oh, I think so. I don't think it's always such a bad idea. Really? Yeah, I'm not against it. It comes with a, a warning, mm. right? Can go wrong. Of course. But not because a guy's going to necessarily think you're slutty. Because if a guy thinks you're slutty for putting it out on the first date, why would you want to continue dating that douchebag? But more about the fact that you could push yourself into friends with benefits mm. and bank yourself as the casual hookup when you really like that person and you want to explore something more emotional. Well, let me actually draw on, a, on an experience that dead set has happened to me before. I went on a brunch date once upon a time. Uh, first date. Brunch date. Yeah, but brunch. Literally, Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Uh, chatting. Just after you did yoga and down a green smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm waking up at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock these days. Yeah, this so is breakfast, breakfast for you. Yeah, yeah, breakfast. Anyway, met up for that thing. Obviously, an hour or so, tops, get to know each other. Nice little cute date. Legit, she drops the bomb about about um, three minutes in that she just uses Tinder for sex. I say, oh, interesting. Okay. We finish the brunch. An hour and a half later, she says, can I come back to yours? I say, well, I'm only human. <laughs> Get it, girl. Come treat yourself. But did you see her again? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, because? Now, I wouldn't say I thought she was slutty because if I thought that was the case, I'd maybe be a little uh, bit afraid of catching something or something well, like that. We shouldn't actually be using the word slutty because what is a slut anyway? How many times do you have to have sex with somebody to be <laughs> counted as a slut? I didn't think she was a slut, but I, I did. I just said don't use the word slut. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't right. think that she was sleeping with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, but it did come across as slightly easy. And I, I definitely would continue seeing her again, but... As much as I want to like sort of open my mind and think, oh, am I being like, too close-minded and whatever, the fact that she was willing to sleep with me an hour and a half in, it just takes that uh, possibility of a serious, prospering relationship. It just throws that out the window. I'm going to jump casual. on you, not in a good way right yeah, now. Okay, all right. Because <laughs> this, okay, this I'll is lay here really perfectly <laughs> still. <laughs> I said not in a good way. Because this is what bugs me, right? Mm. So this study came out um, and it said... Sex on a first date could help jumpstart a relationship, scientists say. Mm -hmm. So I've sat with this for a few hours and I'm like, okay, yeah, we've got this study. Great. We can prove it. I thought, hang on a second. Why is it that we need a scientific study to say that, hey, sex on the first date is okay? Because we have this notion in society that for those women or men who have sex on the first date, it's wrong and you shouldn't continue to date that person because they're slutty. And that's, I think, where we need to challenge these backward stereotypes and go, you know what, if you hit it off on the first date, I'm not going to use your, your Tinder story mm. because she was obviously just out there for sex. That's what she wanted and yeah. she was being honest about it. But say you're on a date with some chick and you really hit it off and you're both having a great time. You feel this desire towards each other and you think, yeah, like you're kissing and it just keeps going. Does that mean that you not continue to date that girl because she had sex with you? Or do you go, hey, we had this great chemistry. We acted on it. We felt that we could and it was consensual. And what is wrong with that? That's why we need to challenge this idea of slut shaming and sex on the first date. Because it can work. I think just personally, I need enough time to pass from locking eyes on them for the first time. To rubbing bodies against each other. I think you can have sex within but minutes, that's hours to slut of meeting. Yeah, I'm not that's saying that's different. Different. <laughs> I'm really jumping on you. I'm like, don't do the slut I'm not, shaming. I'm not saying she's, I, th but I also think there's a difference between having sex and boning and, and guilt free boning and being casuals and whatever. You go for your life, you know someone a couple of minutes and you want to go and jump each other's bones. But I think that you need a certain amount of time to pass if you genuinely want to start making love with someone and that's the kind of traditional sex that I'm having if, if I see something serious and going somewhere. But There's... the sex at the beginning is never making love. The sex at the beginning oh, is raw some sexual is. desire. Sometimes, oh. but I think it's actually more based on raw sexual desire, mm. right? You get this attraction, you see something in somebody, you feel it in your pants, you mm. get 
I think you get butterflies in your pants and on your stomach. Mm. And then when you get to know somebody and there's that vulnerability, there's that intimacy, that's where I think it changes from more that sexual desire to really making love. Mm. Now, I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with having sex on the first date, but also waiting. But what it comes down to is your personal preference. Because what I'm hearing from you is you understand how you work. Danny Lakey has yeah, lived in Danny Lakey's head for long enough that he knows he needs a little bit of a connection. Mm, yeah. He needs to know the person before he gets naked and what can I say? On them. I know my bod <laughs> <laughs> and your brain. Oh yeah, and hey. your second brain. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Um, thirteen ten sixty. By the way, it's not every day we get a sexologist live on the air to answer your sex questions. Only every Wednesday. Only every Wednesday. <laughs> Only every seven days. Uh, if you've got a question for Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Uh, 131060, give us a buzz right now. Maybe it's to weigh in on the, uh, you know, sleeping with someone on the first date or within the first couple of hours, or maybe it's something completely different. Anything sex or relationship E? Uh, give us a bell right now. Relationship E? Yeah, Dr. Nikki Goldstein, she'll fly the flag. I'll come in and play zany sound effects as well. It'll be a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Danny Lakey Late Show. Calls on next. That is Post Malone around the country. The Danny Lakey Late Show, 131060 on Instagram as well at Danny Lakey Late Show. Just to cover my ass, I'm going to press this button. The following content is of an adult nature and it may make some listeners blush, say, oh my God, or even cause offence. Feel free to turn the radio down in three, two, one. Let's talk about sex. Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Dr. Nikki Goldstein is here live in studio, the sexologist, and of course, all things relationship advice as well. Just chatting before, should you be putting it out? Can you put it out on the mm. first date? I mean, no slut shaming. Of course no not. No slut shaming. It's 2019, give it the program, that's fine. But dare I say, Dr. Nikki Goldstein, you and I had differing opinions for once. I, I think we do often. Mm. I mean, I, I just think there's a difference. Maybe there's something to do with that I don't drink alcohol anymore. Hashtag for you sober. Hashtag every day's a struggle. <laughs> that maybe m- the sex these days, I'm, I'm having is bone sober, you know? So maybe, you know, it's different going out, getting trash at the nightclubs. But you you're meet exploring someone you an like. emotional connection. Yeah. That's what you're now more into mm. rather than getting off your face and yeah. going home with someone. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't speak on all my behalf because I'll happily <laughs> take a one-nighter as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but you won't see her again, or you will see her again, no. but maybe just for sex. Yeah, it, it just depends. Yeah, just slut depends. shaming. But there, no, I'm not slut shaming anyone. <laughs> the, more, the more sluts, the better. It's got them, but they're not. Slut s- is the positive. Well, it, I don't like even the word. I slut. don't like the, I don't like that word. Either. Yeah, there's that whole it's slut famous. like reclaiming the word and yeah. calling it a positive. Can we just come up with a new word for a girl that likes a lot of sex, mm, please? Slaza. No, not slaza. <laughs> Back in Albury on thirteen ten sixty. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Uh, you got a question? Are you you weighing in uh, on the chat before? Just weighing in on the chat before. Yeah, yeah. What do you What do you got to say? Well, me and my partner met. I was bartending, and he was picking up the bartender for his first one night stand. Yet four years later, after being easy, uh, we're still together. Mm. See, Danny. I'm not saying it I can't see, happen. I, I love stories like this because I think. As women, we're brought up with this idea that don't sleep with a guy on the first date because he's never going to date you again. And I know somebody who has a story like this, but they're actually married with kids. Mm. And listen, it doesn't work for everybody, but then so doesn't dating. You know, people go out on dates and wait for a few weeks and then sleep with the person and they still end up to be a dickhead and treat them terribly. Yeah, that's so- right. So at least on our, on our behalf, uh, we found out that we were, you know, into the same things, and then we got together in a relationship. <laughs> it's, it's not. A, it's not even about for me that the other lady and what her morals and standards are about, you know, knowing someone for whatever time frame. It's. I'm just coming from my own personal where I, I like a bit of build up. I like, like a bit the chase. Of, I do. I like yeah. a bit of the chase. I like a couple of dates. I like a couple of different That's settings. That's an ego. I, I think it all adds. <laughs> I think it all adds to the to the moment. You, I mean, you, if you if you eat cheese, the second you see cheese, it's not good. You dangle a wheel of camembert and make me wait 13 hours. It's the nicest soft blue I've ever had. But oh, cheese is great at any oh, point, in my, in my yes opinion. Yes, <laughs> some yes, Brianna Bicky would be nice right now. Oh. But I do think as you get older, when you have maybe experienced a lot of casual sex and it's kind of been on tap, you get to this point where you do want to explore an emotional connection. And I find that as we age, we do tend to shy away more from sex on the first date and more, I want something to look forward to and build up to because we know what sex is like and we've had it. Yeah. And we think, oh, but we want to do something different and we want to get vulnerable and we want to get intimate because I think experience teaches us mm. that when you are vulnerable and intimate, it can be even more pleasurable. Mm. Yeah. Thanks Very for the, true. Thanks for the call.
Beck. Uh, Zach in Melbourne. Thank you for proving him wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your question, Zach, to Dr. Nikki? Uh, yeah, how are we going, guys? Um, <laughs> it can uh, often take quite a while, more often not, to uh, finish when I'm intimate with a uh, female companion. Oh, are you <laughs> um, on 20 milligrams of Lexapro a day as well? Because that happened to me. <laughs> no, no. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, when it goes on for, you know, what some people class as too long, it mm. uh, can quite take you out of the moment when mm. uh, that's all you can all you can focus on. So mm. I was wondering if there's any tips or anything. Or... Clench your asshole <laughs> like it's the last day on earth. I find that helps. I'm going to ask Oof. a few questions. Yeah. How long, like what time period are we talking here? Well, you know, it all depends. Um, some, like, some people like give up. <laughs> quicker than others but you know once it's gone it's like you know sometimes over an hour hour and a half they uh yeah you start questioning what's going on see i think for some people there's nothing wrong with this when we say too little and too long no one has actually said hey this is how long we should be having sex for i mean i'm sure there's a clinical study out there but why should we listen to that anyway Mm. it's what works for you Mm. so you know for some people it does take them a longer time maybe they you know it's to do with sensitivity in terms of what you're you know what you're feeling, what you're desired to. But I don't think you necessarily need to see this as a bad thing. I think what you've got to zone in on is what particular acts or positions or toys or lubes really feel good for me. And if you do have a partner that is saying, hey, it's taking a bit too long, have a look at why they're complaining about that. Is that because they feel you know, that they're not attractive enough, that you're not finishing, that there's something wrong with them. Are they feeling uncomfortable? Is there friction going on? Do you need to use more lube if you're going for an hour, an hour and a half? These are all the things that I would be thinking about instead of complaining I'm going for too long. Have a look at actually changing your attitude around that, but Mm. also incorporating acts and things that are the most stimulating. Because we get to know our bodies and we know that, okay, I know I finish off by this, this and this. So if it does get to a point where a partner's going, oh, I just, I'm giving up, you need to be able to communicate, well, you know what actually really does help me finish? This particular act, this particular act, mm. and this particular move. Yes, a strawberry condom, lots of lube, and the Mexican <laughs> death grip. <laughs> What's a me- Should I ask what a Mexican death grip is? It's when she's is? trying to choke you out like a UFC fighter, and then she's holding on uh, to the member with the other hand as, as hard as she can, like she's trying to squeeze oh, like the, last bit of, the last bit of tomato sauce out of the bottle. Hey, if that yeah, works, like a, if that works, Danny Lakey move. Get yeah. around me. <laughs> Thank you, Zachary. Best of luck on your quest as well. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Nikki Goldstein, for coming oh, in. You're welcome. All right. See can't you next wait. Week. I can't wait to hear the stories you have for me next time. <laughs> oh, let's go. Oh, P.S. Uh, just side note, we are we are in the middle of watching uh, some porn from the 18. Oh, yes, we're gonna get back to that. Let's get back to that. <laughs>